This is my 2003 Key Largo, 16 foot with a 90 horsepower Yamaha two-stroke. I will show you how I dealt with maintenance to the fuel tank. I traced the problem of the engine not getting fuel to where the fuel pickup line goes into the gas tank. It had broken at the elbow and while trying to repair that, the breather tube broke as well. Underneath the center console is a very small access panel that gives you access to the top of the fuel tank. However, it's, it's a very small area to work, so I went ahead and took off the whole center console. Here you can see in the red arrow where the broken elbow is. I tried to unscrew the, the, this elbow, but it just disintegrated, so I knew I had to drill into the tank. That was when I decided to remove the tank. So in order to remove the tank, you actually have to cut into the deck, which is what you see here. I didn't want to cut too large of an area. Just enough to be able to remove the tank. So then I, I made this contraption so I could uh, basically hoist the, uh, the tank out of the floor because it was tight. It had been in there for a long time and it was wedged in pretty well, but this uh, come along worked perfect. So here you can see the tank slowly coming out. I was able to remove the fuel sender plate and then hook the hoist into that circle in the gas tank and able to wedge it up like that. It was a very tight fit because I, I didn't want to cut more of the floor than I needed to because it would be less repair putting it all back together when I was finished. And here's the tank completely out and out on the ground and then I'm taking measurements in case I need to replace it with a new one but I ended up uh, not needing to it was in good shape I did look around just to see how much one of these tanks would cost and I couldn't find one with these strange dimensions so as you can see this two small holes I have to ream them out because they completely broke off so this is me using a Dremel tool to clean the inside of the old fitting. These are the new parts, the collars and elbows that I purchased at Ace Hardware. And I also purchased a new fuel pickup from the local boat store. This is the collars being pre-fitted. And then I'm, I glue it with a JB Weld plastic bond bonder. And this is the finished product. New gasket on the fuel sender and everything's taped off ready to go. Alright, ready to put the tank back in. It, again, it was a very tight fit. It was very difficult to get it in there, but I was able to cut a, such a small section that once the center console is replaced, you won't be able to see the, the cut at all. I couldn't force the tank in any further, so I ended up getting a 2x4 with a, a mallet and just tapping it. And it would go in like inch by inch, just slowly tapping it. And finally it would go far enough to where it would clear the edge and just drop right. Yay! Finally got it in. I attached these small pressure treated blocks to the side for the floor, the new floor to rest on top of it. And then I put the floor on top, screwed it down, and then I gave it a, a nice coat of white paint. Now I want to stop here and talk about why the additional PVC pipe with the tube sticking out. I had wanted to do a project to this boat for a long time, about 10 years, and I'm finally able to do it while I'm doing this whole project at the same time. It's just going to make it a lot easier. I've always noticed that while fueling this boat, either at the pump or with the gas can, it would always be slow to fill. 
And usually the most common problem for this is that the breather tube is clogged. But I checked that a long time ago, and that wasn't it. So after much research, I discovered that this is a common problem on this particular boat, and that the design of the fuel filler tube starts at the rear and runs parallel with the boat for about eight feet until it reaches the fuel tank. So here's a picture of the old filler at the, the rear part of the boat. So then I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put the fuel filler on the side of the center console so there would be no restriction with the gas filling the fuel tank. And so that's what, why you see the extra tube there. Uh, I coated everything with this fiberglass and resin. And that was about all I did because it didn't need to be pretty. Here I am tracing the new fuel filler door opening. And there I've cut it. And there's the new door. It looks pretty good. This is what the inside uh, underneath the console looks like now with the new fuel filler and breather tube. And this is the hole that is going to be covered with the access plate. This is the hole that was where I removed the old filler. And then I did a little bit of fiberglass work. I'm not very good at it, but it, that's it. Covered. And then this is a final look of the fuel filler door. And that's basically it. Let me know what you think of this craziness.